Welcome in everybody, Ty Bartell in with another edition of Coach's Corner. This time we head over to our friends in the NE8 with the boys basketball coach, Craig Hannon, joining me today. Coach Hannon, how are we doing? Good, how are you today, Ty? Oh, I'm not doing too bad myself, Coach. What I always like to start off with is because it's practice season, I mean, obviously season right around the corner. We're chugging away to, to December 1st, right? But when you look at practices, what are your positives and some takeaways you're seeing from uh, from the boys in practice? It's 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 a different practice just because, you know, the last really four years we had a group uh, that, that played almost every minute for four years. So it's, it's basically almost a brand new team of guys that, um, we're still trying to learn. I think part of the practice that's gone well is, is just trying to figure out uh, what we do and don't do well. I think we're almost making a list at the end of every practice. OK, this works. This doesn't. Um, and, and we just have a, a lot of work to do. And I, we actually don't open till December 5th, which is a good thing for us because we just we have a lot to get to, a lot to go over. And, and we're still trying to learn each other and learn what works and what doesn't. Obviously, December 1st, the opening day for some teams, but you guys got that extra four days, and that does help, too, when you're trying to figure out those those little things. I know the roster's not finalized yet, but when you talk about some names we can expect to see on the floor this year uh, for Gerard, what are some names that come to mind? Well, two young guys that came back from their 10th grade year into their 11th grade year, Nick Rafferty and, and Dom Phillips, uh, two kids that played a full year of JV for us. They're going to play quite a bit for us. You know, we're mixing in some football guys that, that – um, you know, names would be more familiar football wise as uh, Steven Sims, Ahmad Kerr, Domenico Simone, Tuff McConaughey. Um, you know, th those two are, are dealing with a little bit of an injury, the last two right now. Um, and, and once we can get them healthy, it'll round out our depth. Um, there's some younger guys too, Alan Hess Cardona, uh, Caden Clare, Cam Herrick, uh, some some guys that are that are sophomores and juniors that um, their experience may be lacking, but there's most certainly talent there. Um, and again, these names are all going to be new just because in the last few years, um, it's been the same group of guys that have played most of the minutes for us. Do you have an idea of a type of brand of basketball you guys are going to play or what your strengths are expected to be this season? Or are those still kind of figuring out? Obviously, by the end of the season, they might completely change anyway. Yeah, but I mean, I'll be honest, um, you know, with some of our athleticism and some of the guys we have to play multiple sports, we're, we're going to have to be an up-tempo, pressure-in-your-face type team. That's great to say in theory, um, whether we put it in practice or not, you know, we're still trying to figure out how to do that. But I, I would imagine we're going to be a pretty athletic team. Uh, we're going to get after teams pretty good on the defensive end. I think that'll come first. Then offensively, you know, we'll have to see where our strengths lie. Coach, let's talk a little bit about uh, your conference that you're in. I think the NE8 is very intriguing for me this season, looking at it, especially on that boys' side, because I think, obviously, there's some teams that you could, I guess, consider favorites, but I think it's pretty wide open for, uh, for a good majority of the teams in this conference. What do you see competition-wise out, out of the conference this year? Well, I think first and foremost, I think you always want to look at who returns the most. And, and off the top of my head, South Range most certainly returns the most, and they shared the league with us in Jefferson. Uh, you know, Jefferson leaving opened the door, I think, a little bit just because they did return quite a bit of their team um, with some real talent there. But without them in it, I, I would say probably South Range and, and Poland return the most letter winners. And, and usually when that happens, um, you're, you're going to get a, a um, you know, elite champ from, from who returns the most. But you're right, it, it usually is wide open. Last year, three teams shared it. There were upsets throughout. Um, I think it's a pretty balanced league. I think any given night, anybody can beat anybody. I don't think you'll be surprised at any scores. But just looking at returning letter winners, I do think South Range and Poland probably return the most. When I was talking with Coach Warnicky from Struthers in, in one of his coaches' quarters, he he poked fun at the the fact that you're now the the grandfather of this conference now because of the influx of young coaches. How does how does that feel to be one I, of the you know, I just so what I did, I just sent an email to all the league coaches introducing the new coaches, and it's funny like. You know, Ryan Fitch has coached longer than me, but it's his first year at Hubbard. Jesse Harden, who I've known for, for a while now, ever since I got to Gerard, he's a head coach. Pat Carden, who coached with me for two years um, and is a dear friend of mine, is now a head coach. And, yeah, I mean, I, I, I have the most years in, in this league. I've been at Gerard 12 years, and, you know, I'm like the old head somehow um, because I got hired when I was so young. Um so there is, there has been an influx, and you know, we're me, Mike, and Eric um, Fender are going to have to really learn what these guys do because they're they are they're relatively brand new. I mean, you know, Matt Baker's a head coach at Lakeview. I I, I played 
pick up basketball for years with his brother, David. So <laughs> I do. I feel really old when I, I felt really old when I typed that email because I can't believe some of the guys that are head coaches now. Uh, coach, I mean, yeah, you taught him some of what they know, but you didn't teach him everything you know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what. I, I, maybe Pat a little bit. We'll see. But um, it's but it's, when, been, it's most it's certainly interesting when I when I when I looked at it and thought, wow, I I, I am I'm I'm relatively been in this game a long time now. <laughs> You talk about a dozen years with this program, though, and I mean, it leads me right into that next question. What keeps you coming back? What keeps you in the head coaching role? What keeps you with uh, the Gerard Indians year to year? I, I'll, I'll tell you, I, ever since I walked into this place and walked in as a teacher and a coach, it's been so supportive of me, the community, the administration, the parents, the, the kids. Um, I think I've said it every time I've done this coach's corner. I, I hear nightmares and horror stories from other schools about whether it's school boards, administration, parents, whatever it may be, whatever the issues are, I, I knock on wood. I, I have not dealt with those issues. This is a wonderful place to be a head coach. It's a supportive place. Um, they support their athletics. They support their kids. They support their coaches. And um, that's what keeps me coming back because um, it's just, it's been a wonderful place to, to stand on the sideline. The kids have given me their all. I've had great groups and I, I just, it's, it's very easy to be a head coach here at Gerard. You have a lot of really good local programs on your non-conference slate, too, that I'm excited to. You talk about really good coaches and really good coaching staffs you're going to be going against. I mean, they got good programs left and right. What are some of these games this year that you're excited to have your boys face? I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about all our non-league games. And I, we try to make our non-league schedule match up with, with the type of team we have. Um, you know, I, I think we we start with Newton Falls and, and Coach Sembach, who I have just a ton of respect for for what he's done in that program. Um, but even schools like we've always played Salem and they've always been good games. You know, we added West Branch last year. They come to our place. We've always played Springfield since I've been here. We added Badger, who, who could possibly, in, in my opinion, have the best player in the area in Duncan Moy. Um, there, there's there's some really good non-league games. We play Hickory out of Pennsylvania, who we played last year. And, and I've just I've greatly enjoyed, um, you know, battling the teams we battled. Coach, you talked about uh, your staff a little bit. I want to give you that that chance to get a, give us an introduction to them. I know sometimes things change, sometimes they don't. But either way, I know that staff's always important in getting that program in the wheels turning year in and year out. Yeah, I, really, I've been lucky with my staff. Um, you know, starting in seventh grade with with Phil Kilborn, whose son Tyler now is the Brookfield head coach. He he's really been a, a wonderful asset at the junior high level. Um, you know, Mike Del Ben's been with me now, I believe eight or nine years. I, I don't know exactly. And he's a guy that has about 45 years of coaching experience. And I've just been thrilled to have him on my side. And um, I've, I've been really lucky with those two. And I do have other, other staff, you know, I added Austin O'Hara um, who, who played for me and, and unfortunately dealt with injury and played at West Men. So I have him on staff. Zach Fideski is also on staff, a McDonald kid that brings a lot of energy um, Joe Vivolo, I moved up to J from from the ninth grade to JV. He's the most one of the most positive people you'll be around. The kids love him. Uh, John Cardero has been in the program now for a few years because of his sons, um, a guy that brings a lot of experience. And, and Joe Augustine came over from Mineral Ridge to help out. He was in the junior high program. So um, what I like about my staff is there's a lot of Gerard flavor, a lot of guys that graduated here. So it means an awful lot to them uh, to build build this program because they were in it and they graduated from it. When you talk about what you're bringing back this year, too, does it lead you uh, an opportunity, I guess, to to change things up play style wise? Do you bring these new guys in and introduce them to similar plays? Do you kind of see what what talent they have and adjust accordingly? What what does that look like for for you? Well, you know, you you want your culture and you want your standards to be the same throughout, but but how you approach and how you play is going to be different based on what you have. So yeah, I mean, it, it's going to change. You know, a lot of what we did last year was based around having the ball in, in, in Thomas Cardero and Gus Johnson's hands, and they're not here. So, you know, we have to change what we do. I think we have to play a little faster. I, have to think, I think we have to play with a little more pace. I think we have to put more pressure on teams. I think we have to, to take the action to teams. So you always, as a coach, have to reevaluate. You know, they, they don't adjust to you. You have to adjust to them and, and their abilities. What are the biggest things growth-wise you look to see from the younger guys over the course of a, of a regular season? Obviously, you can't control the the wins and losses where you're going to be in the league, but you know there's always going to be a second season guaranteed after this regular season regardless. So what are some of those things you focus on in the regular season with these younger guys and looking to develop it? Yeah, I mean, we always talk about how, you know, the most important part of any season is is 
really February and March and getting ready for the tournament. We just need growth, you know, just experience more than anything else. We just have a lot of guys that don't have a lot of varsity experience, and we need to build that. And whether it's a senior that hasn't played or a freshman that hasn't played, um, we're, we're just looking for their growth and understanding how to play and, and how to win, really, you know, how to win at this level. And I, I think early on it, it might be a struggle, but I think – you know, I think as we move through the year and, and get into the, the new year, January, February, if we can keep building and stay with it, I think it could look pretty good. All right, Coach, this is my final question I'm going to hit you with, and it's kind of a theme question I've been doing with all head coaches in and around the area. It goes back to the love of basketball for this uh, season's theme question, and it's the love that got us in, and it's the love that keeps us going, regardless of our role in the sport, right? When you talk about the love of basketball for you, where did that love start? Do you have an early memory, a pinpoint moment or something like that? You know, it's funny you bring that up because um, I stunk at basketball probably until like my eighth or ninth grade year. I, I was more <laughs> of a baseball player. I wasn't very good. But I got to go back because I was just talking to someone, um, you know, guys that that really influenced me, one of them being in the late, great Dan Peters. He was the YSU head coach in the 90s. And um, I used to go to his little Penguins camp all the time. My dad, obviously, being the, the voice of the football team, I got to go to the little Penguins camp. And he was one of the first ones that really introduced me to basketball, how to shoot a basketball, what it took to be a good basketball player. I was a ball boy for his teams. And when I got the job here at Girard, he was the first person to call me and congratulate me. And, um, you yeah, know, he passed away recently, probably within the last five years. And um, that, that's probably when it, when it started, but then I, I really didn't pick it up till my eighth or ninth grade year. I played for my uncle Mark over in Newcastle and, um, him and my dad and just my family's very much a basketball family. Um, it started to pick up and ever since then it hasn't stopped. And I, you know, I think the great thing about basketball is you can't hide, you know, you, you, football, you can, there's 11 guys on each side and, um, you can kind of hide under that helmet and, and baseball, there's nine guys playing and you don't, you only get three or four at bats. Basketball is the ultimate game where you you mm. cannot hide. There's ten guys on the floor flying around, and, and if you're not up to par and you're not competing, it'll show. And yeah, I think that's just always always been something I've enjoyed about the game. Well, Coach, we've always enjoyed you coming out each and every year with this Gerard Boys basketball program. We enjoy having your team and your program a part of the YSN family for another year. We're so excited to have uh, some Indians games on the network once again this season. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to covering you guys again. We're rooting for you, and we're certainly excited. Well, we always appreciate what you guys do and appreciate the coverage. We, I think it's a great thing that what you guys do. Our kids always appreciate it. So appreciate you having me, Ty, and, and look forward to seeing you guys throughout the year. Uh, we look forward to seeing you as well, Coach. This has been a first edition of Coach's Corner with Craig Hannon from Gerard Boys Basketball.